what a peaceful night. There is no one around and I can enjoy the stars in peace. What are you looking at, Pa? <gasps> you scared me. What? What happened? Were you not expecting to see me? Of course, my dear. I was sighing because now I know all my prayers are definitely heard. Anyhow, I was looking at the stars in the sky. See, there are so many of them, isn't it? The rishis have moved this month. What rishis? Where? I don't see them. Well, it's easy. You start with Dhruva, the Polaris or the Pole Star. You see the big dot over there? Yes, looks big, Pa. But where are the rishis? Okay, I'll tell you. Now what you do, you fix Dhruva with your left index finger. Now, what month is it? It's July. Correct. That means we are closer to the summer solstice in June. That means we have to look below the pole star. Now, do you see these seven points below? One, two, three, those two, four, five, six, and that one, seven. In the Western astronomy, they are called as the Big Dipper. They form the body and tail of the Big Bear Asterism or Arsa Major. You remember, in your evening prayers, you call out to these rishis as well. Atri, Brighu, Kutsa, Vashishta, Gautama, Kasyapa and Angirasa. Well, are they rishis or is it a bear? Well, they are. <laughs> One second. They look like a spoon to me. How do you find out whether they have moved? The Big Dipper is like a big spoon only. Once every three months, the Dipper changes its position around the Polaris. So first it's like this, then it becomes horizontal, then like this, then it becomes vertical. Now look to your right. Do you see that tweezer-like thingy? The bottom of that tweezer are the twin stars, Castor and Pollux. Together they form the star under which you were born, the Punarvasu. And these stars come under the constellation called Mithuna or the twins. That is why your moon sign is also... What's a constellation? Um, a constellation is a group... What's a Mithuna? Uh, it's a zodiac... Papa, you know what happened? Nilkan borrowed my toys and now he's saying he won't give it back. He wants to play with it for some more time. What to tell him? Well... And he doesn't even talk properly now. Before he was like Lalita this, Lalita that. Now, hmm, boys are always like this. Why are they like this? Well, actually... Not all boys. You are not like this. <sighs> Thank God for that. What I think, what you should... I think I will tell him once or twice. Then I'll tell his mother. Thanks, Pa. I feel better now. How do you know all the right things to tell? Wait. For this question, you haven't told me anything yet. Why are you not telling me anything? I was... I was going to... Okay, Bye-bye, Pa. I'm off to find out what Hanuman did to Prahasta in the new book you got me. Mm, mm, mm. Catch that girl. Come here, you. I'm also going to squish you like how Hanuman did to Prahasta. Always running off somewhere or the other. Listen, now it's my turn. Tell me, did you want me to answer any of those questions you asked? Mm, mm. Oops, sorry about that. I'm still covering your mouth. Here, talk now. Sorry, Pa. Just came to think of it. I did want to know how Indians knew the, how the rishis moved. Let's talk about it. Only if you promise me there will be less interrupting and more listening. Promise. Kashyap Rishi is the Alcade star in the Big Dipper as per the Western astronomy. Some say the star is Marichi according to the Brihat Samhita of Varahamhira. And frankly, the star is so far away we really don't care. What we do care is the coming episode on Kashyapa's greed. Appa, hmm? why are we starting with Kashyapa's greed? Well, a still mind is needed to listen, to assimilate and to remember. In olden days, this was called Shravana, Manana and Nitidhyasa. That is when one can really apply what has been learned. Even then, a still mind is needed to make good decisions stemming from learned tenets. The attention span of many who are learning today is very narrow. 
This is because we are always flipping through the channels on the remote while watching the television or scrolling shorts or reels on social media. The more we do this kind of scrolling, the lesser our span of attention is. We are rarely interested in hearing the full story. We are always cutting to the chase. It is said that the part of the brain that learns deeply and remembers permanently grows insufficiently when exposed to such fleeting content. Also, there are many aspects of our character that gets sharpened only when we are patient while we work on these aspects. Our need for quick answers really hampers this quality of patience. Many of us can't bear to wait, can't bear rejection and can't bear what is even inconvenient. We find it tough to even sleep on our own. It is the same problem, just has many manifestations. Hmm, so you are going in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, is it? Chanchalam hi mana krishna pramathi balavadridham tasyaham nigraham manye vayor ivasudushkaram That is such a good quote, Pa. Arjuna is complaining to Krishna helplessly that regulating the restless mind is tougher than controlling the wind itself. But let's come to that in good time. All I'm going to say now is that so much productive time gets wasted before we realize that our learning has not been deep enough for assimilation. This is also why many young adults today can't apply what they have learned back in school. This is why many feel our education hasn't been effective in retrospect. Our entire educational journey feels like running on a treadmill. We are running all the time and not getting anywhere. The upcoming story is also on how to deal with this fleeting state of mind. You know what is interesting? Even someone as venerable and evolved such as the great Kashyap Parishi himself was faced with this state of mind. But he came out successful and was counted then among the seven immortal rishis. Really? How's that? Hear it first on Ancient Anecdotes on your favorite podcast streaming providers. Tune in every week for a brand new episode.